Good morning from Waxwing. Day two of my solo sail to Ireland uh, from Portugal, and uh, it's a it's a beautiful morning. It was uh, it was a bumpy night because uh, I had 20 knots of wind and beaten into the wind, close hauled, and uh, I got sleep anyway. But it was busy shipping, so today is much better. We have uh, the wind is too light actually. It's it's about 12, 13 knots, uh, but we're going into it, so it's better. Uh, so all good on board. Uh, beautiful morning, I'll show you. Chipping along at uh, five knots. Uh, heading northwest because we have a north wind. So I'm going to push on out west and hopefully pick up uh, my dolphin. Um, Beautiful morning, the Aries steering away perfectly as always, which I love because it will adjust for the wind. Uh, so great to be back out at sea. <laughs> it's like we never left. It's like, uh, it's like we never stopped at all. Beautiful. Look at it. Yankee up, full main. I'll probably put up the stay sail after I have a coffee and try to try get the boat speed up again. Coffee's essential. <laughs> One of my favourite parts of the day is eating. <laughs> so my breakfast this morning, well I had a coffee, is uh, Weedabix, which lasts forever, and uh, banana. I also forgot how difficult it was to record it, see. <laughs> so everything's going well. Uh, we have a course of 295, touching 300. I wish it was 320 as I'm trying to go north, and I'm doing uh, five knots. I can't complain, and it's only nine knots of wind, so that's not bad. But uh, with a lot of wind, not a lot of wind, but I had 20 knots yesterday, which the boat was over and it made it more. So at least I'm getting to tidy and do jobs today, and I'm out of the traffic zones as well, so. Um, so all good on board Waxwing today. So light winds today, uh, Aries working beautifully. Like, um, I don't know if you can see them, like 11 knots of wind, close hauled, and we're doing five and six knots, so that's okay. Uh, all sails up, Yankee stay sail in full main, and uh, she's pointing high enough. I'd love to be pointing higher, but hopefully that'll change. Uh, the, the more west I go, I'll pick up, uh, don't, well, I don't know, the forecast is giving a dead zone out there, but we'll see. Make it up as you go along. <laughs> anyway, love and life. So beautiful to be back out. <laughs> so I'm lying here in the cockpit. Just listening to the waves go by. <laughs> this is what it's all about. This is why I go sailing. I love it. So I'm soaking up a bit of heat. Uh, I'll miss the heat when I go back to Ireland, but um, it normally will drop a degree every time I go north, every day I go north. Uh, so anyway, today I'm soaking it up and chillaxing. <laughs> when I was fitting the wind generator in Portimao in Portugal, I, I fitted a new um, bright LED on, on the pole for the wind generator. So if I'm working on deck, even though I have spreader lights, I, I can put that on and uh, it, it illuminates the whole deck. It's also really good if a ship, I thought if a ship didn't see me, uh, to turn it on and, and just light up the whole boat. Please pick the position. Good morning. So um, another beautiful morning at sea. Uh, winds are light and variable, so I'm I'm tacking a bit. I'll probably go about shortly and head north west again. So this is a, a start of my morning. I uh, do I download my uh, grip file for my weather, and I can check emails and um, messages. And, uh, so it's it's that's pe people ask what do I do at sea all day? You're always busy. So when, as soon as I download the new forecast from Predictwind. Uh, it's through my Iridium Go system. 
as soon as I do that, I'll have a better plan. It also gives me weather routing and stuff. But, uh, I, I just like to see what, the, what the, the winds are doing. And so hopefully if I go northwest, I'll pick up more as, as I go north. Uh, when I'm west of Finisterre, I hope to pick up uh, south and, uh, southwest or west winds uh, to push me to the rest of the way to Ireland, which would be great. So every morning when I get the forecast, it's like, ooh, what's going to happen today? <laughs> anyway, I have a fair idea by being outside what's happening, but it's nice to know what's happening 200 miles away because it'll give you a fair indication of what's going to come this way. So uh, that's just a, a peep at what I'd be doing when I get up. And um, we're flying along, we're doing 5.3 knots at a course of uh, 36 degrees. So we have a good bit of north made last night which is always good, but I'm heading back in towards all the shipping and um, there'll be fishing boats because I, I'm, I'm heading uh, northeast back in towards the, the Portuguese coast. So I'll probably go about after I get this forecast, depending on, on what it says, but uh, a beautiful morning at sea anyway. I'll give you a look outside now in a minute. I always clip on on deck. Uh, the last thing I'd, I'd want to do is, is fall overboard and see my lovely boat sailing away without me. Uh, why I'm on deck today is the leech line on my Yankee has, has come loose. And it's it's such a high clue in the Yankee. It's the disadvantage of a Yankee, really, in one way. Uh, i got to get the boat hook to try to catch it and, and pull it down and, and tension it again. Uh, I was successful after a while. Always a balance and act on deck, but uh, I, I, I always wage myself against something or, or hold something as well as being tethered. Uh, but um, anyway, I got it down and uh, I, I, I use good shoes as well when I'm on deck. I've an awful habit of going barefoot and I, I learned the hard way. It's always better to put on uh, good grip shoes or boots while on deck so you don't slip at the same time. You'll probably notice as well my jack stays are center line of the boat more or less uh, they go up each side of the mast and up to the bow so if you were to fall that you, you won't fall overboard you'd probably hurt yourself but you, you won't go into the water because uh, again if you go into the water <laughs> being solo you it, it could be quite difficult to get back out unless a wave threw you back up or something but um so that's that's just the way i i operate it and it suits me it might not suit everyone but i just be sharing um how, how i do it and and, and why When I say I learned the hard way about um, uh, not wearing shoes on deck, I've always I've always preferred to go barefoot. <laughs> if, if you're watching this, mum, my poor mother had an awful job keeping shoes on me when I was a kid. I, 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 even one day, my dad saw me as an adult, probably in my thirties, wearing a pair of sandals, and he goes, "Wow, good compromise." <laughs> so, I was sailing one time. I don't know, thirty foot long keel boat, and I was sailing her, and I caught my heel. On, on, a, on, on a pin through a, a shackle and I got a bad cut and it cut my Achilles tendon uh, which is nasty and not only that it got infected <laughs> so now I wear uh, I wear sho shoes always on, on deck uh, not to slip but not to, to bang your toe or cut yourself as well and, uh, so that's why I said that on, when I was up uh, pulling down the, uh, the leech line on the Yankee now, if it's heavy weather, I wear, uh, Dubarry were very kind again. I, I have a lot of boots from Dubarry and, and they're fantastic. So I wear them when the weather's bad, but when it's hot, you don't want to wear them. And my mother-in-law gave me these shoes. They're like uh, swimming pool shoes or, or for swimming or, or surfing or whatever. I don't know what they're for, but uh, I wear them on deck when it's hot and they're uh, absolutely perfect. They're really good grip and your feet aren't getting hot and sweaty and smelly, you know? Because uh, when it's warm, you don't want to be wearing big, big uh, offshore boots. Uh, so anyway, that's that's just me. <laughs>
just went about hoping to get a better uh, course and to get away off the uh, the shipping lanes well not the shipping lanes but just the, the, the shipping is very busy in there at the moment as I, as I, I was heading back in towards uh, the Portuguese coast so she seems happy at this So all is good on Waxwing, all is good. Uh, got a good bit of sleep last night, intermittent sleep. Two hour here, get up for an hour, two hours here. And, uh, I, I have to be very careful of, of getting enough sleep. You make mistakes when you're tired. So I, I nap every opportunity I can, even if it's only half an hour, 45 minutes. Even if you're just lying down resting, it's good. So uh, sorry, it's hard to hold the camera. It's a bit, bit bouncy today. So all good on board. Beautiful day, 20 knots of wind, beating into it, heading uh, zero, four zero, so we have a fairly good northerly direction. Good morning from Waxwing, uh, today is Sunday, uh, day four, and it is quarter to 11 in the morning I just got up after another two hour sleep I sleep in two hour patterns and get up and check AIS and stay up for have a cup of tea maybe and so I'm up now for the day which is good and I'll, I'll nap again during the day I'm just waiting for a forecast to download with uh, 20 knots of wind we're making a course of uh, 0 to 0 which is a lovely north co uh, course and I suppose if I kept on this course, it would bring me right to Finisterre, which is good, but it, it probably won't stay that way, but uh, which Finisterre is a long way off. It's always a gamble when you're sailing, what, what, to, uh, <laughs> what course to take and what weather to try again or avoid. But having the forecast on board with the Iridium Go is brilliant. So the sea state is up. So it's a nice lump there today. But uh, we're making good, well, reasonably good speed, four or five knots in, in the right direction, which is always good. So, um, 
I'll keep you posted on uh, what the forecast is doing and what our course will be as the day goes on. So as I said, it's Sunday morning. You can see we have 20 knots and we're pointing as high as the boat will possibly go. Uh, that's our course. If we could keep in that heading, it would be fantastic. And the shipping has eased. Uh, I'm, I'm still outside because I'm running up. I'm, I'm uh, running up about 11. I think I'm just west of 11. So I'm, I'm cheating today. <laughs> I'm having a freeze dry dinner. I'm having Asian noodles with chicken and mixed vegetables. So they're easy and, and they're handy. And that's what they're for on days when I'm, I'm busy and I don't feel like cooking a big dinner. So that's what I'm going to have on today, and a quite simple pour boiling water in, leave it, uh, leave it, leave it stand for about eight or nine minutes, and it's and beautiful meals, and they really fill you up. <laughs> it's like a balancing act. They really fill you up. You won't be hungry for a long time after. Uh, the good quality they're called Expedition Foods. But, uh, I like them. I, I I tried a lot before I ended up with this one, and these are good. And uh, as I said, they really fill you up. So, what I do is I pour the contents into this tub and then pour the boiling water in under that, in on top of that. The reason I do that is um, the bag is then clean. I don't, I don't, I, I, I keep all my waste. So uh, the last thing you want is a bag with wet food that's going to be there for months. Uh, for obvious reasons. Now, if you were camping or hiking or mountain climbing, it's different. You, you can eat it out of the bag, and, but I don't have to. So uh, the less waste I have, the better, and the cleaner the waste. Uh, I even wash out my yogurt jars and stuff like that. Ooh, kettle boiled. So then I have just the empty bag, which uh, folds up really neat and uh, doesn't smell. <laughs> so let's see if it's ready. The other good thing is if you only eat half of it and you have to go out and uh, adjust the sails or the sheets, you can just put the lid back on and eat. It was my friend Marco Nanini, uh, an ocean racer and sailor himself, that, that taught me that trick and showed it to me and told me about it. So, uh, bon appetit. Mmm. Ooh, it's hot. Mmm. That's good. Every trip has its ups and downs. <laughs> so I just downloaded the forecast. This is my position here. That's Ireland where I'm going. One day. Uh, this is the guy I'm concerned about. Look at this. 55 knots of wind. Uh, not good news. Now I have options. Oops. I have options. I could go into the Rias in North Spain, anchor in here. Uh, I'll have to decide that today. Probably best uh, not to be out in 55, 60 knots of wind if I don't have to. You know, that's quite severe. And they're given big, I had, I had it on the radio as well, big um, swell warnings. So what to do? decisions decisions but it's always good to make these decisions it's great to have the forecast so there's always decisions to be made at sea and that's a big one uh i don't want to be caught out in 50 60 knots of wind uh if i don't have to i'm not under a uh, serious pressure to get home so if i if i had to spend a day or two in the rias in, in north spain anchored that's okay too uh it's always good to um to play it safe you know i don't want to break everything i am going home to refit the boat or do a small refit I don't want to be adding to my list. <laughs> Look at 
nap time, my favourite part of the day. So, back to the real weather. <laughs> I just had three trawlers. Uh, you can still hear them beeping in the AIS. And did a long trawl behind them, so I had to go about and, uh, and get across in front of them. So, I took a reef in the main as I was at it. It's blowing 25, and I'm beating into it, so. Uh, all part of it. Hadn't even a coffee yet. Back in foul weather gear. Uh, this is life at sea when everything is messed like this. I actually slept there last night. I tried there, but it was no good. But uh, I had a good sleep there. Um, I swapped from night to night, but anyway, that worked well for me. So heading for uh, Rio, for Vigo in, in North Spain, I'm gonna let, there's a big uh, depression in, uh, approaching Biscayne. I don't, I don't want to be in that if I don't have to be. It's, it's given possible force nine. So I, don't want, I definitely don't want to be in that if I don't need to be. There are times when you will have to be in it, but uh, if you can avoid it. So anyway, I'm, I'm close to, I'm 60 nautical miles off the coast of uh, Spain, North Spain. So uh, it'd be nice to go in and anchor for, for oh. it'd be nice to go in. I'm, I'm punching into big swells. Uh, at six knots, so every now and again you get a slammer. Um, so, what was I saying? I'm, I, it'd be nice to get in an anchor for, for uh, a day or two and tidy up everything and dry off everything and, and uh, start fresh. So that's that's it. I'm going to show you out the portal now. You can see the water running down from the outside because it's, it's breaking over the bow at times. Great boat though, she's well able to punch into it and cut through the waves. Beautiful, just come entering the Ria now. And, uh, behind me is, I think it's called Ilas Kias. I think it's C-I-A-S. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it's a nature reserve. I've always been fascinated with it. I think you need permission uh, to go on the island, but by time, be lovely some other time to do it. Anyway, nice to see it. Beautiful conditions after last night. Oh my God, <laughs> who's on watch? <laughs> oh yeah, me. I arrived safely at this beautiful location 
Uh, so tune in next week for a beautiful sail back to Ireland. <laughs>